running a campaign for any office is expensive. A major candidate's campaign and their allied groups can spend tens of millions of dollars on commercials, conducting polls, running ads, and paying for other expenses during a single election cycle. But where does all that money come from? Enter the campaign finance vehicle known as a Political Action Committee, or PAC for short. A PAC is a group set up to raise donations from individuals or organizations with the goal to spend that money on efforts to elect or defeat certain candidates. These PACs, usually formed around certain interests, can do that through support of specific candidate campaigns, ballot initiatives, or legislation. The first PAC was formed in 1944, when the Congress of Industrial Organizations created one for President Franklin Roosevelt's re-election. While helpful, PACs have their limitations. There are caps on the amount collected from individuals and groups and on the amount given out. However, a super PAC can raise much more. The difference is that these groups can raise unlimited sums of money from donors, but they cannot coordinate with candidates' campaigns or parties. They could, however, coordinate with another super PAC and spend billions of dollars to support certain campaigns or causes. These groups were formed in 2010 after a ruling by the U.S. Court of Appeals, a case linked to the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision that same year. Super PACs can spend money independently on ads, mailings, and more, and must file regular financial reports with the FEC. The proliferation of super PACs in the decades since their creation has reshaped elections up and down the ballot. It's allowed wealthy donors to spend big on their favored races and in some ways even diminish the importance of the candidates' own campaigns, which can accept much smaller cap contributions. And with little expectation that the country's campaign finance rules will change anytime soon, they're a part of the political landscape that's here to stay.